My name is Dale Vince. I'm the founder of Ecotricity. I've set myself a challenge. I'm going to build a wind-powered car. It'll be an electric car charged from the wind, so there's zero emissions from it. I want to build a sports car, out-and-out -out sports car. That's the challenge, a wind-powered car. We've taken the exhaust system and the heat shield from the back of the car. We've taken the engine and transmission out, and we've taken the fuel tank out. Because we don't have such a large radiator, then we don't need such large exit ducts, so these can be closed up. We added 90 mil behind the doors in front of the B post. Well, it's a fairly simple modification to add 90 millimetres in the chassis length and pull this chassis rail backwards. With the extended wheelbase, we feel that we ought to get a professional designer on board to look at the best way of blending this bodywork out. My name's Peter Stevens. I'm a vehicle designer. I've been designing vehicles for the past 20, 30 years. I've worked on projects like McLaren F1, which was just a little team of about a dozen of us trying to do the fastest and best sports car in the world. I haven't worked with, with Tim before. Very interesting to work with him. This is a Citroen Berlingo Electric. It does give you an idea of what an electric car does look like under this bonnet. In Dale's car, the batteries will contain about three times the amount of energy for the same weight. This central block is all of the electronic control systems. And that includes the motor drives, it includes the battery charger, it includes the DC to DC converter. We don't have waste heat from the engine, we actually have to provide cabin heating, and that's what this uh, Wabasco heater does. We have a vacuum pump which is sorry a vacuum pump which is actually underneath and feeds back into a conventional servo back there we have a hydro pump for power assisted steering um, but again that's driven by an electric motor rather than uh, off a belt from the crankshaft because this is a performance vehicle you want to lift the back of it and go whoa um, none of the usual underbonnet cues will be there you know like four big pipes coming out of the engine and all those things which, when you look under the bonnet of something sporty, tells you it's sporty. And that's a new aesthetic, and I mean, I don't know what it is yet, I'd have to admit. You know, and that's, that's what's exciting. Conventional instrument, which we need all the time, is the, the speedo and the odometer um, and trip miles. So that's exactly as a conventional vehicle. But on this side, we've got an energy meter, which is just telling you the percentage uh, of power which is left back in your batteries. And you can see that it goes down into an, an orange level and a red level when it actually gets down to, to fully discharge. And that's the area on Dale's car that we don't want to be operating in. Um, and in fact, with the instrumentation that Peter's come up with um, does look an awful lot better than this. Because it's electric and you don't actually hear the engine, they, uh, they give you some confirmation that you've actually got it in, uh, you're going to go forward. So we have a little green button light which comes on that says you're going to go forward. And we have a red one on the other side which says you're going to go backwards. That might be an interesting thing that we might need to add, but it, it's fairly obvious because you still have a conventional gear stick which has forward and reverse on it. In the interior of this vehicle, I'm doing the instrumentation and I want to, in a way, give the driver an idea of how well he's doing in his use of the energy that's stored in the car. I like the feeling that you start to learn a different kind of language uh, to do with your behaviour in, in driving the car. This is an XM, it's a French car, um, and it's been converted to use two Lynch motors um, and some lithium ion batteries. This is just a, an engineering test bed for me to try out various ideas. So um, not, not even a prototype, just a plaything. The motors that we're using in here are DC brushed motors. Oh, in Dale's car, there'll be no brush noise because there are no brushes. Uh, he uses a brushless DC motor. Um, there'll still be a high-pitched whine, I expect, from the, uh, from the motor drives, uh, the inverters there. But I suspect there'll be less noise in this car because this one really is quite poor as regards ride and handling and noise. Uh, Dale's car is probably about three times the weight of this car. However, it's probably got ten times the power. Um, so that sort of puts it in, into proportion. Meeting Dale was fascinating because he's a really extraordinarily interesting character. There's a genuine, you know, passionate commitment to this. You know, we were immediately keen that we called it a wind-powered car that has an intermediary storage system which is based on electricity, but it is converting energy from the wind into energy that will move a car. Electric vehicles are different and we're trying to make the change to an electric vehicle as seamless as possible 
but there are limits and you have to accept that there will be differences in the way that you drive, the way that it performs, the way that it feels. Um, and we're stuck with that. In the bigger scheme of things, people are going to have to understand that these vehicles will look different. There is a fear that electric vehicles will become white goods and it's no more interesting than your refrigerator or your, your washing machine. As a designer, I'd hate that anyway. That's not what I <laughs> intend to be involved with.